Alrighty friends, today we are talking about a watercolor brand that seems to be quite a bone of contention. If you're curious what this brand is, you should read the title and keep watching. Today we're taking a look at Soho Artist Watercolors. These are a Jerry's Artorama house brand and it seems like they get a lot of hate. I personally like these watercolors, although they are not the only watercolors that I use. And um, several colors are in my daily driver palette. They are in the palette I use to paint my watercolor comic pages. So today we're gonna look at, take a look at the colors I own. We're going to talk about which colors I recommend, which colors I think you should avoid, and we're going to talk about putting these in half pans. I don't own every color in the Soho range, but these are the colors I own. I used to have Opera Rose, and I really liked Opera Rose. I used it quite frequently, but it seems that I am out. So for today's dot swatches, I'm going to be swatching on fluid, easy block, cellulose-based watercolor paper. And I'm just gonna go ahead and use a synthetic brush. Since we're using Jerry's products, I'm gonna grab a black Mimic synthetic brush, cause why not? And we're gonna do this as a dot test. So I do have some decent representatives for every category, although I am lacking a purple. I don't know why or how that happened, but I tend to pick these up every time I go to Jerry's and these little tubes are usually sub $3. So they're about the price of student grade watercolors and I would say they perform about the same quality as student grade watercolors perform. And this is not an unboxing swatch. I'm pretty familiar with a lot of these colors, but every time I go to Jerry's, uh, if I find them, I actually haven't seen them in a while and the site was liquidating them. So for all I know, these aren't even an option anymore. But uh, used to be every time I'd go to my local Jerry's, I'd pick up three or four different tubes, different colors, stuff I wouldn't necessarily own in any other brand, just to give it a shot just to figure it out because, you know, when they're on sale, they're like $1.50. And Jerry's is almost always running in in-store sales on their house brand products. So it's very easy to be able to acquire a lot of these paints. Now, some of the concerns I've seen about these watercolors, and I would love to test these concerns for you guys, are that they're not light fast or archival. And I have a $500 community goal over on my Patreon. So if everybody chipped in a buck, we could hit that goal real quick. I have a $500 community goal over on Patreon where I wanna do multi-brand uh, archival and light fast testing. So that's gonna be a someday Go. Oh, did you all see that? All right, that's how that goes. I'll be right back. So I left all of that in, warts and all, so that you guys could see some of the quirks these watercolors have. Like I said, some colors are better than others. Most of these colors were colors that had never been opened either, and they're under a year old. Right now, I'm soaking um, quinacridone red in hot water. That's the one you saw me struggling with right there. And you guys saw black explode. I kind of scooped some of the piles up into half pans. I just, I don't like wasting paint. 
So um, I'm gonna check in on this in a couple of minutes and that will probably also explode everywhere. But we're gonna go ahead and get started with our swatches. Some tubes are really easy tubes to work with and some are just, you know, ridiculous frustration messes. I'm gonna be doing two types of swatches today. We're gonna do a mass tone swatch at the top and then we're gonna do a gradiated swatch at the bottom. And I'll read out all the colors to you guys once swatching has been completed. Now, typically I don't use these paints from tube. I actually use them from dried half pans. So that's my preferred method of working. And I have a homemade tin, the same tin I purchased for my Kusukabe watercolors. I have an, a homemade tin coming in to store these as well. And if I can't get that quin quinacridone red working by the time you reach its swatch, I'm just going to skip it. Like I said earlier, this isn't a conclusive swatch off. And some of these are actually colors I've never had a chance to work with before, so this is kind of providing me an opportunity to see how those colors handle. Because as I said earlier, not every Soho color is the same. Some are really nice and some are really <laughs> terrible. I actually find the synthetic colors to be my favorites. And I believe this is rose and next to it is permanent rose. My camera probably cannot do this justice because it is, both colors are very fluorescent, very lively, bright colors. Okay, we've reached quinacridone red. Let's hope that's worked. At least enough to get... No, it is, like, it has dried. This was a brand new tube. It has dried solid in the tube, which is annoying. Well, I know another way to get around that. It'll be a shame, because if I like this color, it's like, well, how do I use that? And it's a nice, sort of synthetic-y, fire engine red kind of color. It reminds me of um, Derwent's Poppy Red, which I think is kind of a flat red. I'll zoom in for you guys. So the hot water did not do anything to help with that. And I actually did begin lightness, light fast testing for these because I had a friend on Twitter who was so adamant that these are terrible, terrible, terrible watercolors and they just have no light fastness at all that I decided to test them. And I had them up in my window for about a month, which isn't really enough time, but if you're dealing with colors that are reliant on dyes for their color, you're usually going to see a color shift. And I didn't notice any, like, like there was no noticeable color shift in that period of time. Now, that doesn't mean in a year from now, it's not going to look terrible. I mean, that's what longer, more intensive light fastness testing is for. But it means if you're using these as student watercolors or if you're using these for say watercolor comics or something where the original doesn't have to represent what people see, people aren't gonna be looking at the original, you don't intend on selling the original, you don't intend on displaying the original. So for student pieces, these can be okay. I would say they're no worse than Cotman. Now, I remember really disliking their French ultramarine last time I swatched it. It's kind of a muddier ultramarine. And it's actually not as bad as the last time I messed with it. Actually, I wanna clean that up a little bit because I'm gonna be working the white into that. And then we have one of my favorite colors, just one of my favorite colors, period which is Urban Blue Violet. And I use this color a lot because it's kind of like a fluoro blue or an ultraviolet. Well, an ultraviolet the way marketing terms ultraviolets. And then we have a thalocyanine blue, I believe. I'll double check that in a minute. And I also really like that. And it's also in my kind of daily driver palette. I like using that with uh, 
with like painting florals, painting leaves, that sort of stuff. And again, this is just on cheap cellulose watercolor paper. I find that colors tend to perform better on nicer cotton rag paper. Okay, now we're gonna come up from the bottom. So I'm gonna move the camera slightly. That white just gunked on up, didn't it? So we have Indian yellow, golden ochre, raw sienna, brown ochre, which is a really nice color. Scooch that in there. Permanent rose, rose, make sure it's not dripping all over anything. Urban orange red, quinacridone red, which I'm just gonna leave up there because the tube is still wet from me soaking it. Transparent red, which is not quite so transparent. Cadmium Red Deep. Manganese Blue Hue. French Ultramarine, which once I got all the nasty, uh, very yellowed, old uh, gum Arabic out of the tube seemed to perform a lot better. Urban Blue Violet. Thalocyanine blue, cobalt turquoise, urban green pale, urban white, so this is titanium white, and that's still wet. Move everything over just a smidge. Hooker's green, that's also still wet. Oxide of chromium is still wet. And then ivory black, which is also still wet. So this is everything labeled out and dry. I don't know, whoa, that's not dry. I don't know what I'm gonna do with some of these thicker deposits other than try to scrape them up and um, allow this to dry so I could maybe scan it as it is. This is gonna stick to the scanning bed which definitely causes problems, but I also know you guys can't really get a good idea of color accuracy from my camera. However, just from this swatch test, swatch test, which isn't, isn't fully indicative of anything if we're being honest, once I got the gum Arabic out, all of these colors are performing as well as any other student grade watercolors. They're no worse than Cotman. They're certainly no worse than Lucas Studio Aquarell. So they're really, really affordable to watercolors. The ones that I've used the most frequently, which are Thalocyanine, Cyanine Blue. Let's see what else. Urban Blue Violet, Indian Yellow. I've used the heck out of their Opera Rose, which I don't have here. What else? I know I've used some of their other colors. I think I've used their transparent red pretty frequently. So just these right here um, and a few others, I use these all the time. They're in my daily driver palette. So they get used a lot. I use them on Kara pages. I've never had any problems with these specific colors. Um, so I can definitely say that I really like Urban Blue Violet, Indian Yellow, transparent red, opera rose, which is not shown here, and um, thalocyanine blue. Use those all the time, have not had any problems at all. I am going to dry these out in half pans and come back and do another swatch test to demonstrate that for you guys. And then I'm gonna do a field test video for you guys as well. I'm not really trying to convince you of anything in particular, other than if you see these at your Jerry's or if you're on the Jerry site and they still have these and I could literally go check that for you guys. Let me do that. As I am recording this video, it seems that they are offering closeout prices while supplies last. However, this closeout has been going on for at least 
three or four months when I ordered a bunch of Soho watercolors from the site. Right now, you can get the seven milliliter tubes for on super sale from $1.49 up to $3.99 each and those are three, okay, no, I'm sorry. $1.99 is for the seven milliliter, $3.99 is for the three pack of seven milliliter tubes and some colors are only available in the three pack. So you're spending so little money on these watercolors and they have a lot of colors left. Um, I dare say by the time this video goes live, it could be a mixed bag because some of these reviews do take a while to come out, but it's definitely worth heading over to the Jerry site or heading over to your local Jerry's Artorama and asking if they have any in stock. So I will see you guys when I'm ready to do the tube, I mean the, I was about to say the tube test, which sounded so good, the half pan test.